Hey everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and I'm here today to give you a walkthrough of the Google Analytics 4 user interface. We'll go through some of the most common reports that you'll see so that you can feel comfortable actually going ahead and using Google Analytics 4. With that, let's go ahead and dive on into the demo. So here we are in the user interface of Google Analytics 4. We're looking at the demo account for the Google Merchandise Store. And as you may know, the Google Merchandise Store is a place where you can go and buy Google branded gear. So this is an e-commerce store. Um, so there'll definitely be a few e-commerce specific things that we'll see throughout this demo. So when you open up your Google Analytics 4 property, you'll land here on the home screen. And the home screen has a lot of different info that Google has decided might be interesting to you for a quick snapshot. So you'll th see things like users and new users trending over time, your real time widget of users in the last 30 minutes, some insights, which are gonna be automatically generated using machine learning, as well as a bunch of other quick overview widgets that will look at data pulling from some of the other reports within Google Analytics 4. One other thing I wanted to call out before we move on is this search bar. So this search bar is new and improved in Google Analytics 4, and it allows you to look at things like reports or ask questions to be answered by intelligence. It'll also help you find many different things within the Google Analytics 4 user interface. So if you're having any troubles at all, you can definitely try searching within this search bar to get you started. So moving on, we'll pull up our real-time report. Now, if you're used to real-time analytics within Universal Analytics, this might look different to you. Uh, and that's great because it is new and improved for Google Analytics 4. So we'll see an overview of where our users are in the world, as well as how many people over the last 30 minutes. But if you scroll down, you'll see a whole lot more information here, like users by source or audience, your page title or screen name that people are landing on, um, event counts, event names, and user properties, all in real time. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our lifecycle reports. And there's several reports in this section. We'll start with acquisition in our overview report. And as the name uh, suggests, this is an overview about where our users are coming from. So we'll have a trended view of users and new users over time. But as we scroll down, we start to see other cards looking at new users by medium or sessions by medium uh, or by campaign. And you can change all of these things to any of the different campaign parameters that you might be sending. User acquisition and traffic acquisition, look at a deep dive on those topics. So we'll look at, in this case, new users by medium. Um, but of course, we can change this again to any of the different campaign parameters that we have. And one thing to note here, uh, in any table report within Google Analytics 4, you'll see this plus button, and you can go ahead and add a secondary dimension to this report, similar to how you would do this in Universal Analytics. Moving on, we have our engagement section. And here we'll go ahead and look at an overview. And this is looking at engagement of your website. So how much time are people spending? Uh, you know, what events are they doing? And you can look at engagement by events or by pages and screens by looking through some of these other reports for more details on engagement topics. Next, we have monetization. And here we'll go ahead and look at an overview. Monetization is the new term for e-commerce reporting within uh, Google Analytics 4. So you see here we have an overview of the revenue that the store is taking in and total buyers, scrolling down more of those different e-commerce metrics we might be used to. And then, of course, important to any e-commerce business, our e-commerce purchase report. So what items are most popular on our site? What items are being purchased on site? And you can scroll down and see, in this case, looks like the Google Land and Sea Unisex T is the most uh, popular product being purchased over the last month or so. Maybe I should consider getting myself one of these. There's a few other reports here for in-app purchases and publisher ads if you have app reporting and integrations with publisher ads. Next, we have retention. So we'll look at this overview report. And as the name suggests, again, this is how we're retaining users over time. So we're looking at new users in this first draft, but then we're looking at actual user retention by cohort and engagement in the following reports. Moving on to our user section, 
We'll start with demographics. And there's a demographic overview report and a detail report. So the overview report is actually gonna bring together a lot of the different individual reports that you might've seen in universal analytics into a single overview here, where we're looking at users by country, by city, by gender, by interest, language, age, all of those various things that you would think of when it comes to demographics. And then the details report is going to be a table report where you can focus in on any one of those different demographic dimensions. Moving on, we have our tech section. This is gonna be pretty similar in terms of there being an overview that brings together a lot of the various reports that you might've seen separately in Universal Analytics into one section here. We can look at users by platform. And in the case of the Google Merchandise Store, they only have a web store, they don't have an app. So we're seeing 100% of our users coming from web here. But if you have both an app and a website, this is where you'll see that overlap uh, Venn diagram to see how much of your data is coming from which platform. You'll also see things like operating system, platform, device category, browser, and so on in this report. Again, these are things that you should be used to from Universal Analytics, but this is how they appear in Google Analytics 4. Next, we'll move on to our events section, and we'll start with conversions. Now, conversions are gonna be the most important events for your business. So for the Google Merchandise Store, these are gonna be things like begin checkout, first visit, and purchase, because these are things that are often important to e-commerce businesses. But of course, we have all of our events to be able to report on in our all events report. And this is gonna be a table report of all of the different events that you're collecting in Google Analytics 4. Now, if you look through this table here for the Google Merchandise Store, you'll see that there's a lot of e-commerce specific events, and that makes sense since it is an e-commerce store. So you have add payment info, add shipping info, add to cart, those kind of things. Um, but you can add any type of event that you want here that's either automatically collected, uh, recommended events, or custom events. Moving on to our Explore section, we have Analysis. And this is probably my favorite section of Google Analytics 4. And that is because Analysis used to only be available in Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 360 customers. But in Google Analytics 4, it is available to everyone out of the box. And so you can actually go ahead and click on this template gallery link and see a whole bunch of different reports or techniques that you can use in analysis. Some of my favorite techniques are the exploration technique, funnel analysis, and pathing. But if you scroll down, there's some new templates for use cases and industries that are really useful for many businesses. So if we click into acquisition, for example, it's gonna load an analysis report but this report is already gonna contain several different tabs of data uh, that are specifically looking at acquisition. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here about analysis. We'll be looking at that further in a separate video, but I did wanna let you know that this is here in the user interface, and it's a great way to explore your data in more detail. Coming back over here, we're now gonna look at our audience section. This is under configure. So here we have various audiences that we've built, such as users in San Francisco. And these are audiences that we might be able to share to something like Google Ads for use in our ads campaigns. Then we have user properties. These are things that you would have considered to be a user scope custom dimension in Universal Analytics. They're now called user properties in Google Analytics 4. Finally, we have debug view. I'm not gonna go into there, but it's just a, a list of all of the events and things that are happening within your website or your app that you can actually look at in real time as you're debugging something before you go ahead and push it to production. Finally, down at the bottom, we have our admin section. And if you click into admin, we'll get into our admin screen. And you might land here and immediately think, hmm, this looks different than I'm used to, and you would be right. So in Universal Analytics, there are three columns here. There's an account column, a property column, and a view column on the far right. In Google Analytics 4, we only have two columns, account and property. And most of your settings are gonna live under the property area, under property settings, or data streams. Um, data streams is where you'll be able to bring in your data from your different apps, your iOS or your Android app and your web, as well as data settings. 
And really quickly in data streams, one of my very favorite things here is something called enhanced measurement. Now I know we're getting into a lot of detail, but I did just wanna show you, if you click in here, enhanced measurement is great because it allows you to actually toggle on and toggle off measurement for various things like page views, scrolls, outbound clicks, and more. So that is all I have to show you today. Um, as I mentioned, we will be going into more detail on many of these features in future videos. So definitely stay tuned for those so that you can learn more about Google Analytics 4.